In this video, I want to show you why Maxwell's demon appears to violate the second law of thermodynamics, the two most well-known attempts at resolving this paradox, and why some physicists think this demon still poses a threat to the second law. You may already have heard of Maxwell's demon, but here you will learn the lesser known story of why Maxwell invented this thought experiment, how it subsequently evolved over the next century, and the unexpected role it played in establishing a connection between thermodynamics and information theory. The origins of this demon can be traced back to 1867 when James Clark Maxwell began a series of letters written to his fellow Scottish physicist, Peter Guthrie Tate. In these letters, Maxwell reveals that he believes the second law only has statistical validity. It is not universally valid and can be contradicted in certain circumstances. Furthermore, in an attempt to convince others, he's created a thought experiment which contradicts the famous second law. Interestingly, Maxwell himself did not refer to his hypothetical creature as a demon, but simply as a finite being. It only came to be called a demon a few years later in 1874 when William Thompson, more famously known as Lord Kelvin, coined the term. The setup of the thought experiment is as follows. Begin with a box that contains gas at some constant temperature T. Although each of the gas molecules will have different speeds that follow a distribution, the average speed of all the molecules will depend on the temperature and is therefore a constant value. Next, place a partition that divides the box in two halves. The two sides are now filled with gas at the same temperature and are in thermal equilibrium. The partition also contains a small frictionless door that will only allow one molecule to pass through when opened. Finally, we ensure that the whole system is entirely isolated from its surroundings, so it must be at its maximum entropy. Now enter Maxwell's demon. This hypothetical creature has the ability to open and close the door such that any molecule that has a speed greater than the average speed moves to the right half, and any molecule that has a speed less than the average moves to the left. Eventually, the right half of the box will contain only fast molecules, while the left only contains the slower ones. This means that there is a temperature difference between the two, and the system is no longer in thermal equilibrium. The demon, therefore, has successfully decreased the entropy of the box, an apparent violation of the second law of thermodynamics. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Maxwell created this thought experiment because he believed the second law was not really universal. He thought that this clearly showed the second law could be violated. Many other physicists were not satisfied with this, however, and believed that there must be something wrong with Maxwell's reasoning. This demon was simply an apparent paradox that needed to be resolved. And this became a common viewpoint in the physics community that subsequently led to an interesting history of prominent physicists each attempting their own solutions to the problem. Many of these attempts are quite interesting to study in their own right, but I would like to focus here on just two that have turned out to be most influential. Zillard's engine and Landauer's principle. Zillard's engine was first formulated by the physicist Leo Zillard. In his doctoral dissertation and accompanying paper published in 1929, he was able to provide a solution to Maxwell's demon by establishing the first ever connection between thermodynamics and information theory. He did this by suggesting the following modifications to Maxwell's thought experiment. Instead of having many molecules fill the box, consider just one molecule, and this time the demon has the ability to control the entire partition dividing the two halves of the box. When the demon removes the partition, the molecule will be randomly moving around the box and will be equally likely to be on the right side or the left side. The demon then decides that whenever he finds the molecule on the left side, he will place the partition back and attach a small weight to it that is on the left. If he finds the molecule on the right, he will do the same thing but attach the weight on the right side. Now, whenever the molecule collides with the partition, it will cause the weight to be pulled. This then allows the demon to extract useful work the next time he removes the partition, and consequently, the entropy of the system must have decreased. So the setup is slightly different from Maxwell's formulation, but the problem remains the same. Zillard's resolution to this problem was to argue that when the demon finds out whether the molecule is on the left side or right side of the box, 
there must be an entropy cost related to this acquisition of information. And since there are only two possible states here, and both are equally likely, the value of this entropy cost is kt log 2, where k is the famous Boltzmann constant and t is the temperature. Thus, according to Zillard, the second law remains valid and the total entropy of the system does not decrease. Whenever the daemon acquires information, its entropy increases in just the right amount that offsets the entropy decrease in the box. Now this argument went through various refinements over the years until in 1961, Rolf Landauer slightly changed it and formulated what is currently the strongest form of it. According to Landauer, there really is an entropy cost equal to kt log 2 that is associated to the demon's information about where the molecule is. However, Landauer argued that this entropy increase does not occur during the acquisition of information, but rather when the information is erased. When the demon learns whether the molecule's position is left or right, this requires the demon to store that information as one physical bit in its brain. This particular event does not increase the entropy, however. It is only when the demon's brain has been entirely filled and this information needs to be erased that the entropy increases. And this operation of erasure dissipates an energy kt log 2, once again allowing for the entropy to not decrease and the second law to still hold. Amazingly, several experiments have already been conducted to measure this energy dissipation whenever information is erased in a physical implementation of a bit. So far, all have confirmed Landauer's prediction. It seems the second law is still in good order. Unless there was a flaw in either Zillard's or Landauer's reasoning. This is exactly what two notable philosophers of physics have argued. In a paper published in 1998, John Ehrman and John Norton attempt to show that Maxwell's demon still remains a problem for the second law. Their argument is incredibly simple. If you consider what kind of object the demon actually is, there are only two possibilities. Either the demon is itself a thermodynamic system, or it is not. In the case that it is, then the demon is already assumed to obey the second law, and there is no need to bring in arguments connecting information and thermodynamics. In the case that it is not, then there must be some other physical postulate that saves the second law. And this physical postulate must be independently justified. Landauer's principle is the best candidate available, but has it been sufficiently justified?